All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. It is time to go to Russia. All right, today is the day. I'm in the airport right now. I'm not alone. I'm joined by Mikey Chen, who if you don't know who this guy is, it means you haven't watched the last video. Watch the first video. Exactly. I'm going to give you a few seconds now to go back and watch it. All right, I'm going to give you five seconds. There's going to be spoilers after that, you see. So five, four, you can click the I button, go and watch it, do your homework. Two, one. Okay. You should know who this guy is now, right? My mate Mike is coming with me to Russia. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But before we do anything else, I have to show you what I've just seen in this lounge. You will not believe this is in an airport. They've got bloody Fortnite, boys. They've got Fortnite in the airport. Not just Fortnite, loads of other games as well. Mike, what do you know about Fortnite and PUBG? Nothing, but I do know there's muffins down here. So I'm going for one of those. There's a man who's got his priorities sorted. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know. That is mental. Right, not long before we get on the plane, just picked up some light reading. I've gone with A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I've already... I bought four books. You did actually rip by loads of books. Some of which I recommended, some of which I didn't. Wow, a lot heavy. But the, the, the main one he bought which I recommended is On the Road mm -hmm. by Jack Kerouac. That's a classic. And yeah, so I've gone with quite. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I've already read his book, The Island, which is very interesting. I'm gonna get some anodin. You're getting some anodin. What's anodin? We're on the plane. We're ready for Russia. You ready? Russia here we come, mate. Is Russia ready for us, more like? I don't think so, mate. Okay, we've had our first bit of controversy on the on the trip. Mike's been taken off the plane and there's something vibrating in his bag that's in the holder. He's back. What was it? Well, they said to me, there's something vibrating in your bag. And I'm like, what do you mean something vibrating in my bag? That sounds ominous. I don't think I've got anything vibrating in my bag. Toothbrush. So we're all good? We're safe. Let's go Russia. This is a... This is a Plain certified safe toothbrush. The bag is on, we're sweet. Russia, here we come. Come on. Right guys, I can confirm we have made it to Russia. We're in Moscow, we're not here for long. Quick stopover, we fly to Volgograd. Tomorrow, England, play Tunisia. And according to Mike, it's gonna be 3-1. According to me, it's gonna be 3-0. Either one. way, this freeze, because we're getting three one. points. Ah. Yeah, bah. Yeah, bah. We're being welcomed by the special World Cup dog. Welcome, or should I say in Russian, Rob Ponop. That's the noise of a dog. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. We need to learn some Russian, in all seriousness. We need to learn what is thank you. As a minimum, we need to know what thank you is. Yeah, we do. Let's find out. I, I want to learn a bit of Russian, actually. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's about making the effort. We should make more of an effort. We should. Yeah. Time for flight number yeah. two. Okay, so we've landed, we're in Volgograd. Now we just have to wait for our baggage. 22 hours from now, England kick off against Tunisia. Okay, we're at the airport. We found a little Russian man. He's got a little iPad that translates the language, which is quite useful. Uh, we think we know where we're going. We've asked him, shown him the address of the hotel that Wes has booked. First of all, well done Wes for getting us this far. We're in Volgograd, so you've passed that test. Uh, we've done a little bit of haggling, Mike's done a little bit of haggling. Got him down from 2,000 rubles to 1,500 rubles, which is decent saving. Saved you six quid, mate. Saving six quid. There's a statue as well. Enjoy that. And uh, yeah, basically, so far so good. But this guy could be taking us to a dungeon. <laughs> Hopefully, he's taking us to a hotel. This is a lovely floral arrangement. Look at this beautiful scenery in front of us, though. Got a lovely man walking us towards his car. What could possibly go wrong? Possibly go wrong. Check out the motor, boys. We are getting an absolute motor. Going in style. It's a beaut. Look at this bad boy. I think he might, might be older than me. He's definitely older than me. Yeah, well, if this is the last car journey I ever have, at least I'm going out in style. It's not even got a handle to close the door. Let's do it with this. There we go. Luckily we've got an expert in cars with us. What are you thinking, Mike? <laughs> I, know you, I know you like your old cars. <laughs> we like what we like. That's not going to be it. <laughs> just put the key in and turn it. She's a beaut, mate. I know you like your old cars, but in this scenario, would you rather us be in a nice new car? No, mate. This is what it's about. I, I thought I had to think about it for a second, but this is what it's about. It's about the adventure, isn't it? Straight away, straight out of the airport, we are in... Russia. <laughs> we are in Russia. From the 1950s, and I love it. And he's a lovely dude as well. No, I, I'm just surprised, because he had a bloody iPad that translated his language, and we get in a car that is older than both of us. Yeah, it is. Right, he's got two iPads. I'm telling you, they are worth more than this car. Fact. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that is true, no? She runs like a, she runs like a dream. She runs better than she did when she came out of the factory in uh, 1863. She's got a nice purr to her, I'll give you that. You hear that? That's, That's definitely a lower arm gone. It sounds like there's a bloody lower arm and a whole body in the trunk. I'm not going to lie, 
it's hard to breathe because you can smell the fumes. I'm not trying to be a princess or anything, but I'm, I'm rating it. I rate the adventure. I just hope we make it in one piece because I want to go to the England game tomorrow. But we're already deep inside Russia, that's for sure. Deep inside. So we got her in one piece. In fairness, the driver was actually a bit of a legend, wasn't he? He was actually he doing better than the Google he, Maps. Yeah, he knew exactly where he was going. Considering he didn't speak a word of English. No, he should took we, a straight hit. Should we listen to the car? Listen to it leave. Legend. See ya. So we've made it, we think, to this place. It's kind of like an Airbnb setup. We need to meet the host now and hopefully get in and get settled for the night. Try and watch the Brazil game, which kicks off in about 20 minutes. Right. Here's a. Okay. This is our accommodation. Oh, Wes, you've done it again. You knucklehead. Okay. We have checked in uh, in this little Airbnb place in Volgograd. I have to say, Outside, I was a little bit nervous. It looked a bit ropey. Right, inside, it's actually lovely. Decor's nice. Seems quite newly decorated, Mike, wouldn't you say? I think for a while, when we were outside, Wes was in... Wes was one foot out the door already. Basically, you are on, on course to lose your job, mate. But inside, it's nice. And, yeah. look at that. Yes, so we're going to watch the Brazil game on here in a second. Mexico, though, have beaten Germany 1-0. Lozano with the goal. I predicted it a couple of weeks ago. I put him in my fantasy team. I put it on Instagram. The proof is there. <laughs> Lozano is decent. And Germany are in trouble. And that's interesting, you know, because there's a chance if England have a really good World Cup, we get to the quarterfinals, we could play someone from that group. And I was going to think it would be Germany if they, if they win the group, which they still could. But if they now don't and say Mexico win it, and England get to the quarterfinals, England, Mexico, with all due respect to the Mexicans, that's winnable. That is winnable. Right, update. It's 1-0 to Brazil. Coutinho with the goal. We've got some little Russian delicacies, including these bad boys. We don't know what these are, but some kind of fish sticks. Hmm. And the lady whose Airbnb this is actually made us some sort of bread or bought us some bread, which is very nice of her. We'll have that in the morning. Right, I can confirm. Supermella are super. I can see what they call them it. Tasty little chocolate raisin numbers. Get involved if you're in Russia, Mike. Try one. Yeah, I know one. Let me know if you think they're super. They are right, isn't it? Super mm. nice. They're good. Time has come. We don't know what they are. All we know is they're fish related and they're sticks. I think they look like they could be absolutely disgusting. But I'll try anything once. Oh my god. Let's have a sniff. Smell that. No. Oh. Ready? Don't do it, mate. No. Disgusting. Can't even keep that down. Try just that tiny bit. No, you I've, gotta just do it. I've just seen what you just did. You've got to do it, I've done it, you've got to do it. It's a little tiny bit. It's honestly disgusting. I can't let people buy them, pay money for it. Mate, it stinks, dude. You've not put it in yet? No. No, it's better than it's horrible. <laughs> honestly, if anyone speaks Russian, let us know what these are. Alex Daknowski, if you're watching, I mean, who would eat these? Why do we buy them? What a waste. We'll give them to someone, because we're not having them. Unless it's a punishment of some kind. <laughs> If England don't at least draw tomorrow, I'll eat that whole pack. <laughs> I've made my bed, now I'm gonna lie in it. Tomorrow's the day. England tune is here. Let's go. Night, Mike. Night, night. It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. Football's coming home. Come on! But in all seriousness, I do want to raise one point. Just got back from my run. Lovely run. 27 degrees outside in Volgograd. Beautiful. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter because Germany lost yesterday, which is crazy. Because Brazil drew. Because Spain drew. Because France didn't look that convincing. Because a lot of the big teams aren't coming out of smashing teams. Everyone's like, it's our year. It's going to be our year. And I think some of them, of course, are joking. But I just want to make that something's clear, like we need to keep ground. We haven't even played yet. We haven't even seen our boys get on the pitch. We could be talking in this vlog in a couple of hours, devastated that it's all gone wrong and we've bloody lost to Tunisia. It's possible. Realistically, for us to actually start believing we can win the World Cup, we need to see three really strong group performances. And even though Germany lost and Brazil drew and all this stuff, they're all gonna get out of the group, trust me. They're all gonna get out of the group. If Germany don't get out of the group, I will be flabbergasted. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go to the game tonight. Let's hope England gets something from this game. Hopefully three points. And then, maybe after that, and maybe after a win in Panama, and a good result against Belgium, then we can start to believe. It's a bus, it's more of a van. It is a van. But it's 
decent. It's a decent van. The van's going to decent. Tunisians there. Competitive prices, it's about 25p a trip. Can we get out of here? Can we get out of here, please? Thank you. Out there's where he wants to go. Out here, in here is where he is. There you go. That was interesting. We, this, this transport so far on this trip has been interesting, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm glad we did it. The thing is, right, I, I feel bad because I feel like we're constantly talking about whether we feel on edge, whether we should wear our England shirts. We decided not to wear our England shirts. We've got them in a bag. We're going to put them on in the game. I think that was the right call, to be honest. I feel bad constantly talking about like the negativity. This place has been great so far, and a lot of it's in our own head. But I want to tell you guys because it is what we're thinking. And if I don't tell you what we're thinking, we're not giving you a true experience. So I'm hoping as the trip goes on, We'll feel more at home and, and more at ease. But right now, I'm getting in a random truck to go to places. I'm going in a taxi that looks like it's falling apart. I feel a little bit nervous. But the truth be told, the, the people be told, have been legends. Been fine. The people it have been lovely. Been fine. It's all in our own heads so far. Yeah. And I honestly believe that is the case. And I think we're going to get more comfortable. Now we should go into football mode because it's a few hours before kickoff. Oh my God, the first game of the day kicks off in 10 minutes. We're going to get our fan IDs. That's what we need. We need to get our laminated fan ID because you can't get in the games without them. We've got our tickets already, but we need a fan ID. There he is, Cristiano Ronaldo in Russia. Hat trick hero from the other night. Trying to get our fan ID, we've got a little bit of a problem because apparently we need our passport and uh, we didn't bring it. It was a 45 minute bus journey to get here. We've got it, we've got the fan IDs. We're in, we're official. This just went up a level. I'm surprised by the lack of English people around, by the way. Not a lot of English shirts. Maybe they're going undercover a little bit like we are. Maybe they're just not coming out yet because the game's not till 9 p.m. But I expect, I've seen one person, actually two people in an English shirt since we left the hotel. 40 minute ride, two English shirts. Sweden, South Korea games kicked off. We're going to go and find that. Then we're going to try and check out this unbelievable statue called the Motherland Court, which is 85 meter statue. It's also, this is obviously uh, Volgograd, but it used to be called Stalingrad. There was a big battle and um, they renamed it after Stalin, you know, it became apparent he was a bit of a bad egg. They renamed it Volgograd on the River Volga. And yeah, we're going to go and explore it a little bit. Cheers. Okay, this is where it's all going to go down later. That's the stadium there. Then over here, that bad boy in the distance, or should I say bad girl, is the Motherland Calls or the Mamayev Kurgan. It's a statue that was built to uh, remember the big battle that happened at the Battle of Stalingrad. The biggest single battle of World War II. It's nuts, because we're still a long way from it. Yeah, we're miles away from we're it. Still a long, that is massive, that thing. Let's go and check it out, up close and personal. This is what it's all about. Look at this, it's unbelievable. Honestly, this place is incredible. Look at this. This is one of the most impressive landmarks I've ever been to in my life. It's absolutely unbelievable. Mate, this place is amazing. It's unbelievable. Like, yeah, I'm quite touched. It's one of those places you go to, you hear about it and you go, yeah, it'd be cool to go and check it out. When you get there, it's like, whoa, it's nuts. Look at this. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I thought these guys were statues and I've just realised they're real people. Do they stand here all day? It's bloody hot today. It's 29 degrees right now. Fair play to them. I have to say guys, like architecturally speaking and also just like awe inspiring, this is one of the most impressive places I've ever been in my life. Like, these are the names of people I assume that were lost in the battle. It's just names and names and names and names and names. That hole there, a massive hole there where the light comes through. It's just breathtaking, this place. Honestly. And there she is. In terms of the way that this place is making me feel and think, it reminds me of when I was a teenager and I went to the Battle of Normandy um, like graveyards and saw the Flanders Fields, I think they're called, and you see the endless, endless graves and you realize how many people died in battle. One word to describe this place, Mike. Mind-blowing. It's like, but also quite depressing. You think about it, it wasn't that long ago. It was 1942, 43, wasn't it? Yeah. Look at that. It's nuts, isn't it? And there she is. Do you, know, do you know the thing about this place though? What? That, I, that I, I actually really like now is that, yeah, okay, in 1942 and 43 there was this massive war here when, when countries weren't getting along and everything else, and literally just over there, I think you spin that camera around, I don't know, mate. That's the stadium, I don't know if you can see it between the trees. Yeah, just there. And it's 
we're, we're going to be playing tonight and it's the World Cup and ev all the countries coming together. It's the complete opposite of what was happening back then. And it's nice, isn't it, that this is there and literally just a kilometre away is a stadium where that's going to happen. That's very true. And I was reading on Twitter, someone said uh, about the, one of the, I think it was one of the first guys in space, a Russian guy. He said something about when he went to space. What he lo loved is that it's so high up you couldn't see the borders that divide us. Yeah. That's amazing. Silhouetted by the sun. I'm trying to show you guys how big this is. I don't think I can do it justice. It's absolutely massive. 85 meters high. That view is sensational. River Volga. Stage we're playing in later. Unbelievable walkway up here. Quite simply, one of the most impressive sights I've ever seen. I'm hoping I'll be equally impressed by England's performance tonight. I thought I'd seen a unicorn. I thought I'd seen a West Ham shirt in Russia, but it's Aston Villa. Shame. I had to clarify for him though. Man United shirt. Lots of people wearing Premier League shirts out here. I've actually seen more Premier League shirts than I have England shirts right now. Right, we wanted to find a, a bar or a pub just to get some food, some drinks, watch the, the game before the England game, the Belgian Panama game. We found a place called the Greenwich Pub. Sounded English, we thought we might fit in there. Here it is. It's got the football, but no one else is in here. It's just me and Mikey boy and the football. Look. We've got, we got someone, we've got a customer. Sit down while you can, Spence. Yeah, take, take a seat. Alright, let's see what's on the menu. We've got um, hot from chicken powders. Um, do you want an aunt from Barcelona? Or maybe an Oliver Jamie, Jamie Oliver's cousin. Black Mamba, perhaps. You look like you fancy a Black Mamba right now. <laughs> right, I found some absolute wisdom here. Give a woman a mountain of diamonds, and she evaluating it. And give a woman to the mountain of burgers and she will be with you until the end of day. Burgers are the key, guys. Okay, watching the Belgian game against Panama. We're gonna get some food, but first of all, it's time to get into England mode. Okay, so Belgium game is over. They won three nil, pretty convincing fashion. Against Shaw, a quite weak Panama side, but Panama were going back to the wall, park the bus, pretty much their whole team in their own half whenever they didn't have the ball, and it took Belgium a while to break it down. Nil-nil at half-time. Once Belgium got that first goal, Panama had to come out and play, and the floodgates opened. I expect Tunisia to have a similar game plan tonight. Yes, they're a much stronger team than Panama. They're actually stronger than people are giving them credit for. They only lost 1-0 to Spain in the last warm-up game, and they're unlucky not to get a goal. They drew with Portugal. They're gonna defend deep. They're gonna try and hit us in the counter-attack. If we can get an early goal, it'll be massive for us, because just like Panama, if we score, they'll have to come out and play create some gaps that we can exploit. But if this game drags on at nil-nil for a long time, or even worse, Tunisia get a goal they can defend, that's the way that I can see us being in trouble. One thing that has to be said is I am shocked, and I mean shocked, by the lack of England shirts on display. Literally, I've barely seen any. I'm expecting right, turn around. Look, I'm expecting at some moment we're gonna walk into a corner and there's just gonna be hundreds of England fans in England shirts. But if there isn't, I'll be severely disappointed. I do believe there's gonna be a load of England fans at the game. The question is whether they've worn their shirts or not. Because where are they hiding, Mike? I haven't seen them, don't know. We're the only no, ones. Just us two. Me and him are bowling around in our English shirts. With a plastic bag. No one's coming near us. But um, it, it, if all goes wrong, don't see any England fans. We'll just start walking down going, Vien de la. <laughs> Right, Mike, in the first video, we did a prediction. I said 3 0 to England, you said 3 1. Yep. But right now, anxiety's kicking in. And if my head's talking, not my heart, I actually think it's going to be 0 0. I've got a feeling it's going to be a stalemate. What's your head saying? Uh, I just want to see some goals. Okay. Goals. some England goals, obviously. Yeah. England goals. Yeah, ideally, <laughs> yeah, not a load of Tunisian goals. Hello. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. Right, here we are. It's all lit up, ready to go. About 20 minutes before kickoff. Oh my gosh, guys! I can't stand it. I can't stand it, Mike. <laughs> We're in the stadium, guys. I cannot explain to you the thoughts going through my head right now. I hope we don't mess this up. I really hope we deliver for the boys. Come on. This is it. Don't get scared now. Oh my god. Check out the views. Mike, what are you thinking? Ridiculous seats. Unbelievable, mate. Boys. Unbelievable. I'm deliver. I'm psyched. I'm deliver. Psyched. Come on. Russia, Brazil, Tunisia, England.
save from the Tunisia keeper in their build up was unbelievable. He picked it out the top corner, Kane gets the rebound. Oh, I feel quite sorry for the keeper, you know, because he's got injured. Maybe doing that save, I don't know. But he's been subbed off. He's good for us, but he actually looked quite good. He's gone now. What do you know about the Tunisian sub goalkeeper, Mike? Disappointing, really. Right, half time. I just caught up with the lads at home on WhatsApp. Apparently, they're all saying it was never a penalty. Don't know if that's biased or not. From my opinion, I can see what the ref gave it because I just saw an arm flung, which looked dangerous. But you guys will know better than me. You've seen replays. I haven't seen a replay. Either way, it's one all. Should be winning. We've had more chances. We're not taking them. For me, we look nervous. Hello. What on earth, mate? One moment of just lapse of concentration. What are we doing? Mate, how, how many chances did Lingard and Sterling want to miss? I'm sorry, Ra get Rashford on. Get Rashford I on. agree, get, get Rashford, Rashford on. on. Do you know what's one good thing? How nice is it to get emotional about England again? Mate, Jesus. the thing is, when we scored, Jesus. my mate went to me and we scored, our oh, floodgates can open now. I was like, mate, that's not how England no, do no, things. No, 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 no. It's not how we do things. Don't, don't lose your heads. Don't lose your heads. Do you think we're going to win, though? Mate, we're going on to win it. Like, we're going on to win this game. We have to. I asked if it was a penalty on Twitter. Looks like a pen. Was a pen. VAR was used. Soft. Clear pen. Bit of confusion, really. 100% a penalty. Raising your arm as Walker did, just asking for trouble. There'd be 100 penalties a week in Premier League if it was. It was VAR. Harsh, but probably the right decision. Our pen shout better. So it seems like general consensus is it was a pen. But we should have had one as well, maybe for Harry Kane. Apparently VAR was used. You don't really see much in the stadium when VAR is used. It doesn't really show you what's going on. There was a delay though, so it makes sense. That was like Tunisia's only real chance. Very frustrating. We need to get more. It's like a FIFA game right now. Loads of chances, but only one goal for us. One chance for them, one goal for them. We've got to take them. We can't afford them. We'll have no one to blame but ourselves if we're not scoring chances like the ones Raheem and Jesse Lingard had. Come on, fam. Come on, me. Come on, TV. Listen, great to see you all, but what's going on? For me, that was never ever a penalty. Well, I've got on the winter, and they're saying how they won. Yeah? How they won, 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 how they we should have been about four up before that happened. That's the thing that's annoying. We had so many chances. We just need a bit of composure in the second half. Are we going to win? Yeah, yeah, we'll win, man. We'll win. We're good. 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 we are good why have we still got five in the back? Four minutes injury time. time. We've got a corner. Well done, boys. 
truce is still on. Top of the fans, the truce is still on. <laughs> Harry Kane done a busy. Respect. Yes, Bobby. Yes, mate. Come on! Yeah, Harry, Harry Kane! Harry Kane with the two goals. Get it, Harry! Man of the match! Alright, guys, game over. I've lost my voice. I'm buzzing. There's so many things to talk about. Did we deserve the win? Yes, we did. Were we good in the second half? No. Right, we created all the chances in the first half. We didn't take them. Lessons to be learned. Have to take the chances next time. But we did it just for the skin of our teeth. And yeah, I feel a bit guilty to be honest. I feel, I feel sorry for Tunisia because their fans were great. They were so close to a draw. But would they have deserved the draw? I don't think they would. They didn't create chances, guys. They had a penalty. They took it. But they didn't actually open us up at any point. I'm not sure about the team that should start this game. Rashford was good when he came on. I would start him. I'm not sure about Sterling and Lingard. I don't think Lingard and Deli Alli are going to work together. I'd go with the second centre mid in there from the start. So it's like Henderson and Dyer maybe. Even Loftus Sheik, he was good when he came on. And I'll start Rashford. But make no bones about it, we have to beat Panama. Because based on what I just saw there, I'm not confident we'll get too much from the Belgium game. We might not even get a draw. So we need to go and beat Panama. Six points should see us through. Then we think about winning our first knockout game in bloody ages. But listen, the atmosphere was great. The game just put me through my paces, honestly. I need, I need a pacemaker after that game. I'm struggling. My heart is racing. But the three points is what we came for and the three points is what we got. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and you're buzzing for the rest of the World Cup, drop a like on it, subscribe for more. Make sure you've got the notification bell ticked. More Russia videos coming. Me and Mike are heading to St. Petersburg tomorrow. And then, of course, we will be at the next England game in Novgorod against Panama, hopefully seeing the win. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from him. He's on the phone. And uh, see you next time. Until then, don't go changing. Come on, you England. <laughs>